Dave here, how are you? I'm doing a bit of a revamp in my garage and I'm doing a clear epoxy finish on the garage floor. Now you have seen in a previous episode that I ground the floor, ground the concrete down. There are still some imperfections on that concrete slab. Now that's not going to concern me because I've got to remember this is a garage floor. This isn't my dining room or lounge room. But one other thing I will mention is that DY Mark have given me the product to do this with. Now that's very brave of them and also brave of me because I have never done this before. You will see the mistakes that I've made. You will see the highs that I get as well. Now I've already done the first coat so I can tell you from my experience so far it, the instructions say to use an adequate mask and gloves. I didn't at the beginning. I then put on my ordinary Alien Shield head mask with a P2 filter in it and it wasn't good enough. These are fumes coming off the epoxy and I did start to feel the effect. So then I grabbed my Paftec mask which is a pretty good seal and I've got the specialized filter on the back. I'll take a photo of that and you can read what the filter says. Now preparation. What, what you're going to need. You're going to need some spare rollers. I'm putting three coats down. You might get away with one coat, but I'll tell you what, you'd, be want to, you'd want to be very, very good at doing this if you want to get away with one coat. My recommendation is at least two coats. I'm going to go three. I've bought myself a few cheap rollers. They've got a 13 millimeter nap on them so that they'll roll out the, the product nicely. You'll have a look at a lot of stuff. They'll say gloss rollers should be a very short nap. Well, this is a gloss product, but they say a long nap because it's an epoxy. The roller that I used yesterday, you can throw it away. Throw it away. It's not going to be used for anything. It's epoxied, glued, finished. I managed to get the roller off this handle, uh, but it was a bit of a fight. So you may want to get yourself a couple of these as well, because you don't want to get to a situation where you're, you've mixed all the epoxy up and you're looking around for the roller because it will be too late, my friend. You need to get started quickly. What else? I bought myself a cheap set of brushes. Now, the reason being these things are also going to get thrown away after I've done the application. Uh, gloves. I use these guys. These things are fantastic. They work really, really well. They're a nitrile, uh, powder-free examination gloves. <laughs> All right. Um, I also made, fashioned up a paint stirrer that I'll put in my drill. You use this to mix the part A on its own and the part B on its own. Then you pour the two together and then you use their stirrer. You do not use the drill or powered stirrer once the two parts have been mixed. All right, so here we go. I am going to mix it in this container and then I'm going to decant into this one. Now this one has a specialized roll a thing in there so as you get the product up on it you roll it off it's very clever it's on the wall clear epoxy is not clear this is what was left in that bucket so i was a little bit wary when i was putting it on yesterday first coat first time i've done it so i i was a little bit sparing i probably should have put more on but there's plenty there <laughs> as you can see and being a plastic bucket it came out pretty easy. I just stuck a screwdriver into it and leave it out. There you go. It was there. All right. Next thing. So I think I've given you all the tips from what I did yesterday. Also, there was some tiny, tiny bubbles that popped up around here and there. So I got some 180 grit sandpaper and a block. And I went around and just lightly rubbed over the top of the whole slab. I didn't really push hard. I didn't want to leave scratches in. The whole process was to knock off the imperfections off the top. And then I vacuumed the whole thing. I'll show you here, vacuuming away, what I love. And then we're back over here, ready to mix the second batch. Now I'm going to put the gloves on and the breathing apparatus on. You will notice as soon as you open these cans, the fumes are going to be coming up and at you quickly. I have doors open in this room at the moment, door down there, the big garage doors open, plenty of ventilation, very important. It's going to give me a really wet look concrete. There's going to be spots that looks really nice. There's going to be spots where the grinder didn't, didn't quite get to, get a little depressions. The concrete will look a little bit rougher down there. I don't care. It's a garage. So here we go. Oh, one other thing. This product will not take ultraviolet light. 
Now my garage door opens to the south. So in Australia, we're in the southern hemisphere. That is great. It's pointing away from the equator. I need to put the gloves on. So that's my stirrer. Thoroughly stir the contents in each can. Now I'm going to sound a little bit different while I'm wearing this bad boy, but that's okay. This is giving me total protection. It works on negative air pressure. When I take a breath, the motor turns on, otherwise it just idles away or does nothing in the background. But I can't smell anything, which is a very big indicator. There we go. This is the white stuff. Okay, I'm going to stir this. This is great. I can't smell a thing. Absolutely fantastic. I love this mask for this kind of job. This is a great mask. Oop. Pour it in. Try not to get any air bubbles in there. I'm pouring it down the side. That'll do it. I'm going to pour that into there. Now, I have to stir this between three to five minutes. I'm looking at the clock over there, it's one minute to 11. So I'm just going to move it backwards and forwards. The, uh, the stirrer has got these little holes in it, so basically the good thing about this stirrer is it's not going to let any air bubbles develop. Got a little hook there. It's going through what's called its induction period. Now it's going to be there for about 20 minutes. At around 25 degrees Celsius we'd need to let this stay and in induction, induce, I don't know, what do you want to call it? But that's its induction period is 20 minutes. All right, I'm going to give you a little bit of an insight on how I'm doing the application. I haven't got any of the epoxy mixed up at the moment, so I'm fine without a face mask. I'm going to tell you a couple of tips as you're going along. Now what I have done is I've put down two coats. I'm about to put the third coat down just to make it smick. Now as you put down the coats, you'll find it's very hard to differentiate between where you've already applied the finish and where you haven't. Because on the first coat, obviously you're going from a dry concrete slab to a wet look straight off. Very easy to see where you've been and where you need to paint. Now, the second coat and the third coat, you need to give yourself some form of a marker. What I've done is I've pulled out the compressed air line from inside the building, inside the workshop, and laid it out across the floor. Now, I've made myself a one metre wide aisle, like a swimming lane. Basically, that's what it is. I've put a tape measure across the doorway over the far side and I've put a tape measure across this six metre door. It's very easy to get lost whilst you're applying the epoxy because you're focusing on getting the finish down and you don't want to be too worried about other distracting things like spacing. One of the other things I've done, as I'm going along, I place the bucket at one metre intervals down the side of the lane as well. The whole idea is to get one square metre coated at a time. The other thing I do is I'm using a applicator. I found that the roller was fine on my first coat, but on the second coat, I found that the roller was picking up the product after I laid it down. So I wasn't getting a great coverage with the applicator. I can lay the product out with a very wet edge under here and screed it backwards very lightly. I find that pulls the product back beautifully, but does not pick the product back up again. So that's a couple of tips. It's been two months since I painted the floor with epoxy and I can give you some feedback on how it's handling 
normal wear and a little bit of abuse. Three weeks after I painted the floor, we had a 21st birthday party and it poured down rain outside, so a lot of people came into this room. We had chairs everywhere. Some were timber chairs with felt bases. Some were metal folding deck chairs. Now those chairs, combined with people that had drunk too much alcohol, did tend to scratch the floor. Well, and then with vehicles driving in and out of this garage, the floor seemed to magically repair itself. I'm guessing the sharp edges of the cut into the epoxy were slowly worn down. It's just like giving it a bit of a polish. In hindsight, I'm happy that those scratches actually went in there. I don't want to do any grinding with my bench grinder. The reason being, I don't think sparks are going to be very good landing on the epoxy finish. Now you've got to remember, the epoxy is basically a paint. It's a very, very hard paint that sets harder than ordinary paint does. The imperfections in the floor, which I talked about during the, the preparation and actually painting the, the product, those ended up being a bit of a headache for me. With the floor, with those, in, with those dips, I wanted to start filling them with the epoxy. Bad move, don't try and do it. The epoxy will go cloudy in that the thicker you make it, the cloudier it is. And I've got a part over on the other side of the floor here that I'll show you a picture of, that it was very deep, the depression, and the epoxy actually cracked in there. As it is, I have a large one meter by one meter recycled tire mat that I'm gonna put over that depression and no one will see it and that's fine with me. That brings me to the next question. Wet feet on this super shiny floor. Is it going to be an issue? Are people going to slip over in the rain? Well, for me, it hasn't been an issue depending on whether you've got bare feet or shoes. I've found that if I've come in here without anything on my feet then and wet, it's fine. I didn't slip and that surprised me. I also found that with my sand shoes and my boots that have got rubber style soles, not an issue at all. Stayed very steady and just made that squish, squish, squish noise as you walk around on it. Some hard plastic shoes and leather soles Yes, you're going to have an issue. You will go straight over. I've seen it happen. Because the slab was old and I didn't really pour this slab very well in the first place, it had small voids in it. We never vibrated this slab. So there's tiny little voids. That will give you little bubbles. And you saw in the video where I go over with the sandpaper, it's, that's the best thing to do in my opinion after doing it. As you're painting the epoxy, the epoxy drops down into those tiny voids and because the epoxy has got a very thick meniscus it comes over the surface and also drops down inside and it's displacing air which pushes back up and creates a bubble. Now if you're lucky you can get around if I used a plank supported off the concrete and I went around and I popped those bubbles but even so I still ended up with a little ring. Now for me it didn't concern me but if that is something that you feel is going to annoy you well then maybe you shouldn't do it with epoxy. When I get out of my old little car, I feel as though I'm stepping out of a Rolls Royce because the floor looks so classy. <laughs> One of the other advantages of it, no dust. No dust whatsoever. Easy to clean. I have birds, I have ducks come in here and they do their business on the floor. Well, it's easy just to give it a quick hose. Clean, two seconds. Doesn't take long at all. Because it's a sealed surface, it dries very quickly as well. So it's only the surface, the concrete itself is not getting wet either. There we go. If you like what I'm doing, keep on coming back. Just click the like button, subscribe to the channel. You will see a lot of stuff happening in this room. This room is being prepared for a very special event and it's coming very soon. Thanks for watching. I shall see you next time. Bye. <sighs> More sweeping. <laughs>